Okay, so I hope everybody can hear me. So this is my uh, 12 batch, batch number 12, and we are in learning the recruitment and selection process, right? So I hope you all um, can hear me clearly, right? So last time we discussed about the importance of selection process, right? So we discussed on this area, whereas why this selection is very much important to an organization. How does it affect? So the same scenario can be applied to the, um, as the advantages also, right? We'll see what are the advantages of selection. Okay. Costly, as you all know, recruitment, and selection process is very much a costly process, right? In order to have a good or the effective success of the selection, right? We need to have a proper planned out selection procedure. So in, in coming up slides, you'll be learning on the selection procedure, right? So even though we are not following a selection procedure, if we are following only recruitment procedure, there is a high chance of not getting the success result through the interview process or the recruitment process. Therefore, we need to have a selection process. So if we do a right selection, it will be a cost effective. Cost will be saved and your time will be saved and your effort will be saved. Because if you have done a right selection, that means you have the correct person for that organization. You don't have to do it again. But if you have done the bad or the incorrect recruitment, the incorrect selection, that means either in another one month's time, two months' time, that person will leave the company and HR people have to do the recruitment process once again. It is a costly process, right? So therefore, it is important to do the selection correctly. Then it will be a cost effective, um, like time effective and effort. All these three will be reduced, right? In order to have a good selection, right? Once we are following the correct procedure on the selection, then it will be Avoid the biasness. Arya andura na hinda gatta, me andura na hinda gatta ne me. Hariyate qualifications wala ta company ke requirements wala ta suit me na employee ke ne ek pas select kar pohama. Then there won't be any biasness among the other people, right? And through the selection, we can reject or eliminate. The candidates who does not have the proper knowledge, maybe the ability or the experience, likewise. So if we are recruiting a marketing manager, and if we are looking for a person who is having 10 years of experience with an MBA, right? if there is a candidate who has not done an MBA and who does not have a um, 10 years of experience, then on the selection process, we can reduce it. We can like reject that. Of course, we can do it at the screening level also, but we could relate that part in here also, right? And through the selection process, we are done a thorough background check. We are calling the references and asking on the candidates, right? So we can get a good idea on what kind of a person is that candidate is, right? So we, we can find out his knowledge, capabilities, skills, experience, attitude through some selection tests and all, we could find out, okay? So that is the selection.
right? So th that is the advantages of the selection process, right? So I hope that part is clear and you can combine these advantages with the importance as well. There is no harm, okay? So when you are learning, you will get to know that the same thing is over repeating in the advantages as well as the importance also, right? So there is no harm even if you mix the two, okay? So we'll write the note on that. So write the topic as advantages of selection. Under that, a good selection process a good selection process offers the following advantages. offers the following advantages. Under that first point, it is a cost effective, it is cost effective it is cost effective and reduces a lot of time and effort reduces a lot of time and effort It is cost effective and reduces a lot of time and effort. Second one, it helps to avoid, it helps to avoid it helps to avoid Any biasing,
while recruiting the right candidate. While recruiting the right candidate. Third one, it helps eliminate It helps eliminate the candidates It helps eliminate the candidates who are lacking in knowledge It helps eliminate the candidates who are lacking in knowledge, ability and proficiency. Proficiency. Next one. It provides a guideline. It provides a guideline to evaluate the candidates. Guideline to evaluate the candidate further through further through strict verification and verification and reference checking. Reference checking. Next one. It helps in comparing. It helps in comparing the different candidates. different candidates
it helps in comparing the different candidates in terms of their capabilities, knowledge, skills, experience, work attitude, etc. Right. So now we are going to learn on the methods of selection, right? What is those methods of selection? We'll see. Right. So, methods of selection. So, when we are selecting a person, other than the interviews, right? So, interview is one way of selecting a person. There are other ways also. We'll see. So, you may have come across these kind of methods also. So, in some companies, what they are doing is they will ask the candidate to do some presentation. Right. For an example, if we think we are going to hire a training manager, so the main objective of that training manager is to conduct the training programs. Training manager can have a company training programs conduct Right. If the training program conduct the presentation So presentation is one way of selecting a person. And then we have work samples. So work samples means previously, whatever we have done, we could produce at the interview. Now for an example, researchers, articles, publications, right? Apidamuko, we are going to hire a writer, Lake Kekwa Ganneyanama Kela. Ethera Lake Kekwa, api company ekakata recruit karaddi, api balanama yaagi pahugiya. Precaution of Monoda Tien Nikela. Ea Kohoma the Potak Liela Tien, Eage writing style like a Kohoma and Eva Kedeva, Apiage Parana, a Karapu Deval Valinta my balance. So those things calls as the work samples. Right? Then we have peer assessment. So peer assessment is not a uh, very familiar method when, when it comes to the companies, but it is useful in colleges, right? Where your colleagues, in different maybe classes will evaluate yourself and give the feedback to the management, right? So then through the peer assessment, there is a way of giving, getting selected and interviews. Of course, we have done a thorough study on interviews. Assessment centers. So assessment centers means just like a, a center where there are a lot of um, your skills, attitudes, knowledge, and everything will be assessed, right? And we have psychometric test, psychometric test, where we, we are going to learn on that in few, like in coming slides. We could have the personality test, right? Achieving test, right? Likewise, we could get uh, some IQ test, knowledge reference checks, all these things can be done and see how the employee or the, how the candidate is performing or getting marks through this psychometric test. 
it is mainly to look on your attitude your behavior and your personality right so that is those are the methods of selection okay right so um please note down on the methods of selection so i'm not going to give you a note on separately on this uh, topic but you can write down the methods of selection please copy the slide the uh, six uh, points Okay. Right. So now we are going to learn on the selection test. Employee selection test. So we'll see what are those. right so first one we have aptitude test so even though the word is aptitude is some kind of a big word but you all are familiar with iq right iq test where some mathematics right some general knowledge some terms and like um like so general knowledge kind of a paper to check the ability to know what kind of a, uh, knowledge in terms of you have when it comes to these general stuff that is what we call the aptitude test then we have an achievement test so achievement test means through the interview or we are putting the candidate to a situation to explain on how he achieved a certain task 
and how he gained a professional knowledge through an achievement right kakari uh, special knowledge ka profession vurti me hakiyawa danumak eya laba gatta na mukakari karyak karala anne e pilibandawa eya eka gana api guda karunu hoya balana so that is a called what we are calling is an achievement test then we have a situational test where mainly to check the decision making maturity right so the candidate will be given an example real life situation and asking his opinion right so in a situation like this what would you do what will be the decision that you are taking so based on that decision the candidate like the decision what the candidate is saying on that decision the company will uh, think what kind of a person this is then we have another type of test which is the personality test <clears throat> which is the personality test right so personality test all of you know right it's always to see how the employee's personality behaves or we could say it uh, judge the behavior of the employee or the candidate right so that is the personality test so we'll write the note on that so topic is employee selection test employee selection test under that the first one aptitude test aptitude test under that this test is commonly used This test is commonly used This test is commonly used to judge the latest ability latest ability of the candidate of a candidate to know new job skills. Next one, achievement test.
achievement test. Under that, this test is conducted This test is conducted This test is conducted when an applicant claims when an applicant claims to know some special professional knowledge. Some special professional knowledge. It is useful to understand It is useful to understand understand the importance of specific knowledge of a specific knowledge, the individual processors The individual processors 
at the time of an employment at the time of an employment needed by the organization by the organization to select experienced candidates. Third one, situational test. situational test. This test is used to find out this test is used to find out Basic characteristics of an individual. <coughs> Basic characteristics of an individual which is reaction and maturity etc which is maturity, reaction and maturity, etc. reaction and maturity, etc. A candidate is observed
the candidate is observed with a real life situation. In this, he is told, told to In this, he is told to told to involve himself told to involve himself to solve a critical situation to solve a critical situation by bringing out his ideas by bringing out his ideas his ideas last one personality test personality test under that personality attributes are considered Personality attributes are considered as important as 
as important since they affect since they affect Since they are fast, the entire behavioral pattern, the entire behavioral pattern of a person. of a person. Right, so we'll see how the personality test occurs. Have you ever taken a personality test for an interview and failed? Or maybe you have a big interview coming up and they told you that taking a personality test is part of it. Well, guess what? Today I'm going to show you how to see those tests. So why do companies administer these types of tests anyway? Well, the truth is that these tests were invented to help them understand. We know that when employers are assessing you for a job, they're trying to understand three things, your personality, your aptitude, and your experience. And in that order, even if you have all the experience in the world for a job, if you don't have the right personality fit and the right aptitude to do the job, then you're not going to be the right candidate. And so that's why they've started to administer these tests to help them figure that out. Now, maybe the thought of taking these tests really stressed you out. I understand you're not alone. But I'm here to tell you that all you need to do is a little preparation. That's really the secret to success here. And I'm going to break down how to do that today. So to start, let's talk about the three basic types of tests you're going to run into. First of all, there's something called cognition. And that's really what do you know. And the second, there's the skill-based ones, which is what are you capable of doing. And then the third is really focused on your personality, which is how you communicate and interact with others. Now you might be thinking, why are companies so mean? Why do they make us take these tests? But there's actually five good reasons that companies will use these types of tests. The first one being that they want to weed out ill-fitting applicants. Usually there's hundreds, sometimes thousands of people applying for jobs, and they've got to be able to narrow it down to the top two or three candidates. A test like this can help them do the heavy lifting and get to that top. The second thing is that it lets them be objective. It can be really easy to get subjective. And what that means is have an opinion about a person. And good or bad, that shouldn't bias you when you're making the selection of the right candidate. So these tools can help somebody stay objective about who is the best candidate for the job. The third is that it can overcome lying. Yes, candidates do lie in the interview, and tests like this can help figure that out. 
The fourth is that it can actually replace references. Instead of having to call multiple people and trying to figure out who you are as a professional, this test can help them figure that out a lot faster. And lastly, a lot of companies believe that these types of tests help reduce turnover, and that's really important. Hiring is expensive. I told you in the past that when a company hires you, it's really about 130 to 140% of your salary because they have to pay extra taxes, extra benefits, training time. It's an investment to hire you, and they really don't want to make a mistake. Okay, so we know what types of tests are out there. We know why companies do it. Before I go further, let's do a little practice test. I'm going to give you a question, and let's see how you answer it. Let's say a test asks you, which one of these statements best describes you? Which one would you choose? I enjoy the thrill of meeting new people. I like to be alone most of the time. It's hard for me to make conversation with people I don't know. I like being the center of attention. Now, this is actually an example of a behavioral question. And companies love to ask these questions because they're open-ended. They require more than a one-word answer. And the most important thing you need to know about that is there's no wrong answer there. There's an answer that's right for you. However, what they're looking for is the answer that best matches the kind of job that they're hiring for. So for example, if this was for a job where you're going to be working with a lot of customers or cold calling a lot of prospects in order to make new sales, then the company is likely looking for someone who answers that they enjoy meeting new people. Okay, so I realize that this can become a little bit tricky because some people might say, well, JP, are you telling me to lie and choose answers that I think will be the right one for this question? No, I don't want you to do that at all. But I do want you to seriously consider the following tips so that you can be authentic when you're working on these types of personality tests. First of all, do your homework. Make sure you learn as much as you can about the company, what it's like to work there, what they look for in candidates. Sites like Glassdoor offer a ton of information and resources that you can use to get a better handle on them. Next, be honest. Don't pick an answer just because you think it's the right one for that question. You really have to answer from that. Third, don't be extreme. I've heard people say they want to game the system by answering high or low on the spectrum of what the question is. You really don't want to do that. That's not a way to get to the right answer. You want to answer truthfully based on what you feel at the time. Finally, I want you to remember to ask some questions before you actually take the personality test. There's some things that you need to know, like what's the test measuring? Ask them to clarify that for you so that you can understand. Also, will this test be going on your file so that if you try to apply there in the future, they're going to pull the same test back? And third, and probably the most important, will they show the results of you? Will they interpret them and tell you if and how you are fit or not a fit? These are all great questions that you can ask definitely before you take the test and can help you have peace of mind as you go into it. Speaking of questions, it's really important that you ask great questions in the interview. So if you haven't already, check out our YouTube video. I'll put it in the link here. It's eight smart questions you can ask hiring managers in the interview. And this is a total game changer. You know, answering questions is just one part of that. To build a relationship and a connection and to really stand out in the interview, you need to ask great questions in the interview. These eight are really going to be game changers. So be sure to check out the link below and watch that video. Another thing I want to mention is that possibly you're having trouble even getting in. Not even going to get to the personality test if you don't get the interview first. So if that's the case for you, then please check out our free webinar. It is down below in the link or maybe up above here. And this webinar is going to teach you all the things that you're probably doing wrong and holding you back from learning more than Okay, so my question to you now is, was this helpful? And specifically, can you share with me in the comments below the piece of information that you found most valuable today with respect to personality tests? I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any questions or additional feedback, I'd love to hear that as well. So make sure you put that in the comments below. Okay, three more quick things. First of all, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Secondly, I will see you in the next video, so be sure to tune in. And third, I want you to remember this. If you want to win, you've got to work it daily. Have you ever taken... Right. So now we are going to learn on the selection process, right? So I hope you've got an additional stuff on the um a personality right so however we will uh, continue with the selection process so these are the four steps of selection process right so you already know interview we have already discussed reference checking yes i've explained you that is to get a full detail about the employee candidates details and medical examination right so medical examination in the sense, 
to do some medical tests and to see whether the candidate is in good fit right <clears throat> so that is medical examination so after that then we will be giving the final selection whether that candidate is selected or not right so that is the selection process right so write the topic as selection process and step Under that, the selection is very important. The selection is very important. For any organization, For any organization, Minimizing the losses and maximizing the profits. Hence, the selection procedure
Hence the selection procedure should be perfect. Should be perfect. Should be perfect. A good selection process. A good selection process. Should compromise. Should, should compromise the following steps. The following steps. And please write down the four steps as you can see on the slide. Starting from interview, reference checking, medical checking or medical examination, and the final selection. First one. First one. Employment interview. Employment interview. Under that, employment interview is a process. Employment interview is a process process in which one on one session in which one on one session. One on one session is conducted. One on one session is conducted uh, 
conducted with the applicant with the applicant with the applicant to know a candidate better to know a candidate better to know a candidate better it helps the interviewer it helps the interviewer to discover the inner qualities to discover the inner qualities inner qualities of the applicant of the applicant and helps in taking a right decision and helps in taking a right decision right so that is the only note that i'm giving under interviews just take two to three minutes and refer your previous notes on the interview give me two to three minutes i'll be back soon
Second one, checking references. Checking references. Reference checking is a process of reference checking is a process of is a process of Verifying the applicant's qualification Verifying applicants' qualifications and experiences and experiences <clears throat> with the references provided by him with the references provided by him with the references provided by him. These reference checks, these reference checks These reference checks help the interviewer help the interviewer help the interviewer understand the conduct understand the conduct. understand the conduct the attitude and the behavior the attitude and the behavior attitude and the behavior of the candidate of the candidate as an individual as an individual And also as a professional. And also as a professional. Thank you. 
Next one, medical examination. Medical examination. Medical examination is a process Medical examination is a process in which the physical and medical examination is a process in which the physical in which the physical and the mental fitness and the mental fitness mental fitness of the applicants are checked of the applicants are checked are checked to ensure that the candidates are to ensure the candidates are capable of performing a job capable of performing a job 
or not. This examination helps the organization This examination helps the organization This examination helps the organizations in choosing the right candidates This examination helps the organization in choosing the right candidates who are physically and mentally fit. Who are physically and mentally fit. Fourth one, final selection. Final selection. Under that, the final selection the final selection is the final process is the final process which proves that the applicant which proves that the applicant
that the applicant has qualified in all the rounds has qualified in all the rounds all the rounds of the selection process of the selection process and will be issued an offer letter will be issued an offer letter and later the appointment letter. Later the appointment letter. In another paragraph, a selection process the selection process with the above steps with the above step will help any organization will help in any organization in choosing and selecting in choosing and selecting the right candidates for the right job.
Right. So that is the end of the salary, uh, sorry, selection process. So before I moved on, I just wanted to share some slides. So this is, these are the some of the questions that is asking on a, uh, in an interview. And these are some sample reference check questions. Okay, so we'll move forward with the next one. Salary negotiation, right? So I'll give uh, one or two minutes for you to complete the selection process. Right. Okay. So now we are going to see after the selection process. So the once the final um, selection is done, then we have to discuss on the salary. Right. So everybody will be paid a salary for the service that they will be given for the company. So that is what are called we called as the salary. So we need to negotiate the salary. All right. 
so that means it is the actual worth of the candidates just give me a moment Right. So that is the actual worth of the candidate. So basically, before we do the final selection, it means before we do offer, uh, before we issue the offer letter, the salary will be discussed and issued. Right. So mainly, um, the both parties has to have have to have a um, certain um, what do you call it as the um, um, acceptable a uh, salary range where the candidate as well as the organization agrees because normally every organization do have a salary grade now for an example for assistant level we will be paying from 20000 to 30000 or 40000 for executive we will be paying 40000 to 80000 for manager 80000 to 150000 likewise there are salary grades so the if the candidate is not agreeing to a salary scale now for an example there are for HR assistant role, we are paying only maximum of 40, but the candidate is asking for 50,000. So the company cannot do that because they have a salary grade. So the salary has to be negotiated by each party. Either the candidate has to reduce some amount or else the company has to increase some amount. So that is what we call the salary negotiation. So you all know what is meant by say, if you are employed at the moment, of course, at the very first interview, right? At the final, not the very first interview, at the final interview, you may have asked for the salary package and you, have, you may have negotiated, right? So that is what we call the salary negotiation. Then we have, okay, tips for good salary negotiation right so it will says to have an idea about the um, job market right so what is the market rate for that position right and always we need to give the ask the candidate uh, the breakup of the, the basic salary any allowances that he preferred likewise the it has to be breakdown right and if the budget is less Right. If the candidate is asking more, then the company has to make aware the candidate on the other benefits that he might get if he joined. Right. So don't worry, I'll be giving time for you to write on this. Right. So it's mainly a win win situation for both parties. Right. So if there is a huge gap between the salary. <coughs> sorry proposed salary versus the expectation <coughs> right then the candidate won't get a chance excuse me
So that's why it is saying it should be a win-win situation for both parties, which is the employer and the candidate. And both parties has to be uh, have to be beneficial. Okay, so that is the win-win situation. So we'll write the note on the salary negotiation. Under that, salary negotiation is done salary negotiation is done ahead ahead of issuing an offer letter of issuing an offer letter offer letter this is the heart of recruitment and selection process this is the heart of recruitment and selection process. Heart of recruitment and selection process, wherein, wherein the actual worth of a right candidate, wherein the actual worth of a right candidate right candidate will be evaluated will be evaluated the remuneration offered should be The remuneration offered should be balanced <clears throat> should be balanced comma acceptable. acceptable and agreed by both the parties <clears throat> and 
and agreed by the both the parties the employer and the employee both the parties the employer and the employee some organizations have <clears throat> some organizations have salary grades salary grade which are already assigned for <clears throat> which are already assigned for which are already assigned for <clears throat> each and every position each and every position hence the new employee also receives <clears throat> Hence, the new employee also receives the salary as per the grade for the salary as per the grade for as per the grade for <clears throat> which the candidate is qualified which the candidate is qualified and selected for which is the candidate is qualified and selected for
next topic tips for good salary negotiation <clears throat> tips for good salary negotiation under that first point research about the job posting research about the job posting <clears throat> well in advance well in advance well in advance and have a clear understanding and have a clear understanding <clears throat> understanding of the demand and of the demand and supply of skilled professionals skilled professionals in the job market in the job market <clears throat> second point make the candidate understand make the candidate understand understand the breakup of the total package <clears throat> the breakup of the total package of the total package that is offered that is offered and next one do not reject a candidate do not reject a candidate if his expectations are Thank you. 
if its expectations are beyond the budget beyond the budget come on rather try to make them understand understand the fringe benefits or we could say other benefits <clears throat> other benefits that is being offered that is being offered in the package that is being offered in the package Next topic, a win-win situation. <clears throat> a win-win situation. Under that, the negotiations should be a The negotiations should be a win-win situation. Win-win situation. where both the candidate where both the candidate and the employer and the employer <clears throat> employer should benefit should benefit <clears throat> should benefit If the candidate expects, 
if the candidate expects and demands for a higher salary and demands for a higher salary than the offered salary than the offered salary offered salary come on then the employer can raise the package <clears throat> then the employer can raise the package in the following cases. In the following cases. Under that first point, the candidate is highly talented. <clears throat> the candidate is highly talented. With a potential to deliver. with the potential to deliver great results. <clears throat> Second one, the candidate has exceptional skills.
Next in paragraph. Sometimes there is a high demand. <clears throat> Sometimes there is a high demand Sometimes there is a high demand for a skill for a skill and the market does not have does not have sufficient and the market does not have sufficient supply of sufficient supply of qualified candidates to fill the gap. to fill the cap. In such cases,
in such cases, the HR team offers The HR team offers rewarding packages, rewarding packages <clears throat> in order to attract offers rewarding package in order to attract to attract Talented professionals. Talented professionals. Hiring managers hiring managers most of the time
most of the time have a budget for each position have a budget for each position and they are under pressure and they are under pressure to hire the right candidate to hire the right candidate to hire the right candidates without overshooting without overshooting their assigned budget. Right, so now we need to see how we are going to make a job offer. Right, so when it comes to making a job offer, the following details has to be defined. Right, so the designation, location, role, responsibilities, remuneration or salary, benefits and whatever the terms related to the company right so those are the things has to be uh, defined or included in the uh, offer letter right so appointment letter will be a expansion version of the offer letter right so we'll write on that so write the topic as making a job offer making a job offer
making a job offer is the final stage of is the final stage of recruitment and selection. is the final stage of recruitment and selection. Once a candidate is selected, Once a candidate is selected, he will be issued an offer letter. He'll be issued an offer letter which describes in point form, first point, the designation. Designation, second one, job location. Role, responsibility. Remuneration benefits. <clears throat> Few terms and few terms related to the company policies.
in another paragraph making an offer making an offer is a crucial part of crucial part of recruitment and selection recruitment and selection because it is stressful recruitment and selection because it is stressful and demanding process demanding process until the candidate joins the company until the candidate joins the company after issuing an offer.
Okay. Right. So that's it for today under the making a job buffer, right? So what we have to do is we have to see what next after issuing uh, the job offer, right? So we will discuss it at the next class, right? So according to the calendar, you're obliged to well. So again, we will be meeting on 14th, right? 14th is the scheduled ta timetable. So we'll see how it goes, right? So thanks a lot for joining with me today. Hope to see you again on another day. Till we meet again, stay safe. May God bless you all. Thank you.